No matter how good a horror film is, nobody is gonna see it unless the advertisements suck you in. So to ensure the trailers leave an impact on the viewer, studios often cram them with sinister dialogue, spooky money shots, and heart-pounding jump scares. However, that doesn't mean everything you see in a teaser is guaranteed to be in the movie that you eventually pay to see. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror trailer scenes that were cut from the film. Number 10, we're gonna get you, Evil Dead 2013. Many expected the 2013 Evil Dead remake to have a few nods to the cult classic original, but this second go-around didn't just have one or two references to Sam Raimi's directorial debut. Instead, it had an avalanche of callbacks, many of which were too subtle for even the most devoted fans to notice. For instance, in the movie, the drawing of the abomination is taken directly from the Evil Dead's poster art, and not only are there many lines lifted directly from its predecessor, but the reboot uses some of the exact same audio clips, including the line, one by one, we will take you. Even though most of these subtle references went over casual viewers' heads though, there is one callback that everyone should have recognized. That's because in the excellent trailer for the movie, the Deadite playfully sings, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you, not another peep. <laughs> Obviously, much scarier than that, but it was an obvious nod to when Linda sang the exact same line to Ash in the original Evil Dead. Now, although this line was used in the trailer, and it was awesome, by the way, the scene itself is chilling, it was sadly left out of the theatrical release, much to the dismay of fans. Number 9, Bloody Mary, Paranormal Activity 3. So many scenes were filmed for Paranormal Activity 3 that the filmmakers said that they could have cobbled together a completely different movie from the spare footage. Despite the fact that this sounds like a little bit of an exaggeration, it actually isn't. And that's because some of the TV spots for Paranormal Activity 3 actually mainly consist of scenes that are not in the movie. In the trailers, for instance, we see Katie and Christy performing the Bloody Mary ritual, playing a knocking game with the spirit, a psychic being slammed into a table, and Julie being tossed around by a possessed Dennis. Even though these moments were regarded as the highlights of the trailers, every one of them ended up on the cutting room floor. The finished product is so alien to what was advertised, in fact, that it almost felt like the studio was just trying to piss off the audience. Although these misleading trailers left many viewers infuriated, it didn't seem to affect Paranormal Activity 3's box office in the slightest. Number 8, a whole other premise, Alien 3. Okay, saying that Alien 3 had a troublesome production is like saying hell is a little bit warm. Considering the production itself spent years in development hell and went through a myriad of scripts and directors, it is safe to say that this threequel was an unmitigated nightmare to develop from beginning to end. And because every aspect of the film changed right up until the sequel was released, it's no surprise that several shots in the trailer didn't make the transition to the big screen. And that's not even talking about the initial transition trailer, which erroneously implied that the story would actually take place on Earth, which, of course, it did not. In the official trailer after this, though, there's a shot of an explosion killing multiple prisoners, Dylan carrying an unconscious Ripley, and the prisoners tracking the Xenomorph. But after the producers ordered a drastic set of reshoots, all of these shots were removed. Fortunately, the sequences did see the light of day in Alien 3's assembly cut, which was released in 2003. This version included over 30 minutes of deleted scenes, including all of these shots from the trailer. Number 7, M in Hollywood slash Nobody Nope. Nope centers around a rancher called OJ whose life turns upside down after his father is killed by a supposed UFO. Shortly after, OJ's sister M heads to the ranch to help with the family business and uncover the truth about their father's death. Though OJ is very apathetic and passive in the movie, his sibling is kind of the polar opposite, regularly talking about her aspirations for Hollywood. Even though this aspect of M's life isn't fully explored, the trailer shows multiple seams of M in Tinseltown. We also see a blink in your miss shot of M holding back tears while holding a camcorder, but it's unclear whether she's watching old footage or actually recording something. Another peculiar shot from the trailer depicts a man credited as nobody casually walking towards the set of Gordy's home. Because everyone else in the shot is sprinting in the opposite direction, it's safe to assume that this scene takes place immediately after Gordy attacks the cast. But if that's the case, why is nobody so nonchalant while everyone else is panicking? Why is he walking towards the danger? And also, who the hell is this guy? Sadly, we can't answer these questions because these scenes were all cut. Number 6. 
How many Predators are there? Predators. After the abominable reception of Aliens vs. Predators Requiem, sci-fi fans were understandably skeptical when Predators was announced in 2010. But when the trailer revealed the film would revolve around mercenaries battling the hunters on their home planet, even the biggest cynics amongst us couldn't help but get hyped. Now, as impressive as the promos were, and they definitely were, what really sold this sequel was the one shot of Adrian Brody's body covered with 15 laser targets. This shot implied that our squad would face off against over a dozen mandibled creatures, each armed with shoulder cannons, wrist blades, net guns, smart discs, and of course, self-destruct bombs. And with that in mind, how could this film not be the most action-packed blockbuster since, well, the original Predator? Well, sadly, this was a trailer-only shot. And you know what's worse? There's only four Predators in the whole movie. Although Predators itself is a surprisingly decent installment, viewers couldn't help being let down by the filmmaker's deliberate deception. Number five, Ice to See You, Warlock. In Warlock, a witch hunter is tasked with stopping the titular villain from tracking down the Devil's Bible. To locate the demonic manuscript, the Warlock kills a channeler and gouges out her eyes, which he then uses as an enchanted compass. In the film, the psychic's murder is pretty straightforward. The Warlock makes her drop dead before he then plucks her eyes out off screen. But as can be glimpsed in the trailer, her demise was meant to be far more gruesome. Originally, the Warlock froze the channeler to death before then dropping her icy body to the floor, and as grisly as that sounds, it doesn't stop there. To retrieve the channeler's eyeballs, the malevolent sorcerer repeatedly stomps on her remains, smushing her into a gooey paste. Just when you think you've seen it all though, the Warlock then scoops up the channeler's eyeballs, which apparently reside in her breasts. After this sequence was received poorly at test screenings, I wonder why, it was scrapped and then reshot. Even though the original scene might have been more entertaining in a kind of mad way, it was probably wise to remove it, since its utter ridiculousness would have overshadowed pretty much everything else in the film. Number four, so many scenes, Halloween ends. Okay, without spoiling exactly how or why, Halloween Ends is one of the most egregious examples of intentional mismarketing in years. In order to keep the secrets of its story, well, secret, the marketers included a whole bunch of material in the trailers that were never intended to be used in the final product. That includes a whole bunch of death scenes that are completely reworked in the final movie, alongside other smaller moments and references. Essentially, whatever you think the movie is gonna be based on the trailers and TV spots, well, that ain't the case. And this has, understandably, pissed off some fans, while others have heralded it as a great rug pull, allowing them to experience a genuinely risky sequel. Now, whether that risk was any good or not remains up in the air, though critics certainly have given it a good kicking. So, genius mismarketing or plain old lying? Let me know down in the comments below. Number three, the deer skeleton, get out. Although Get Out's trailer has a smorgasbord of creepy images, one that stands out is the deer skeleton roaring at protagonist Chris. Not only is this a frightening visual in its own right, many assumed that this paranormal creature would be a defining attribute in the film. But that wasn't the case, since the spooky deer never actually showed up in Get Out. Originally, though, Chris was going to encounter the apparition after the Armitage family sent him to the sunken place. But while looking at the footage during post-production, director Jordan Peele thought the ghostly entity didn't look convincing, which compelled him to scrap it entirely. Now, even if this supernatural beast looked legit, Peele probably made the right move. Since the scene itself doesn't drive the plot in any way, and all it does is serve as a cheap jump scare. Because Get Out is already a truly frightening thriller, it doesn't really need to rely on cheap scare tactics like this, which is why it works better without this sequence. Number two, the eye stab, Slenderman. Starting out as a creepypasta meme, Slenderman quickly became a pop cultural icon. After skyrocketing in popularity seemingly overnight, it was no surprise when a film adaptation based on the Slenderman was greenlit in 2017. But after two disturbed teenagers nearly murdered their friend in an alleged vain attempt to pacify this fictional figure, many people thought making a movie about the Slenderman was in poor taste. And so, due to this backlash, Sony took it upon themselves to have multiple violent scenes from the movie removed before it came out. 
So although the trailer shows Chloe gouging her eye out with a scalpel in class, this scene got the chop. As did the scene depicting Katie holding her freshly ripped off tongue, which yeah, again, was removed entirely. Now, while you can understand why the studio got cold feet, axing these moments in particular just led to a ton of plot holes. Because the scene of Chloe stabbing herself was removed, the character just disappears from the movie without her story arc being resolved. Despite the fact that Sony omitted scenes like this to avoid criticism, it only caused the film to receive more criticism when it came out. Number one, half the trailer is a lie, Black Christmas. The 2006 remake of Black Christmas was shredded apart by critics due to its rote script, perfunctory action, and over-reliance on exposition. However, the one aspect that most people criticized was not the movie itself, but rather the promotions. See, there are so many shots in the trailer that are absent from the final cut of Black Christmas that it genuinely feels like a different movie. The trailers had scenes depicting a girl's body under a frozen lake, someone levitating, and a lawnmower-like death trap, none of which we see in the film. The trailer also highlights a teenager tumbling off the roof while being tied up in Christmas lights, and not only was this shot absent from Black Christmas, but the actress in question isn't even in the movie. Now, although one may assume that these scenes were just cut, that's not the case either. As during post-production, the producers, those being Bob and Harvey Weinstein, had various eye-catching sequences filmed to make the TV spots more appealing. The director, Glenn Morgan, was adamantly against this decision, believing the producers were intentionally misleading the audience. Unsurprisingly, Morgan disowned Black Christmas when it came out, stating, quote, Bob Weinstein came in and urinated on it, end quote. So, that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any times you've seen a great shot in a horror movie trailer and then just been a little bit gutted that it didn't end up in the final cut? Let me know in the comments, and while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe as well, and head over to What Culture Horror for more lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.